Hello everybody, this is Dan Bigman from Bigman Geophysical, uh, the president and GPR professor at uh, Bigman Geophysical, and you can go visit us at bigmangeo.com. I'm here today doing another quick start video on a system that's very popular uh, that we sell and rent to folks, and that it's you know, uh, certainly been, been uh, in, put in a lot of people's hands over the last few years, which is the ProSec GP8000. Uh, this video is actually gonna be totally appropriate much of it for the GP8800 uh, as well. Uh, but I'm here, our uh, senior instructor, as well as Ernesto, our uh, service. Uh, and we're going to go over this system. Basically, how do you connect the system together with the tablet? How do you get it started? What are some of the basic functions that you need to know? It's not a full tutorial, uh, but you can go to our website, bigmangeo.com, and sign up for a full set of tutorials. All right, so this is the GP8000. Um, it's a handheld system, four wheels. Every wheel has an encoder on it. The battery pack is in the back right here. And to take the battery out, there's a little trigger underneath you can kind of see uh, right here. And so you just push that trigger up and the battery will pop out and then you can um, charge it right through this little port over here. To turn this on is you just press the power button right in the back, press it, um, and then just give it a moment. So if you look at the screen, it'll get this little eagle uh, coming up, the screening eagle, and uh, and then it'll give a second for it to go. To connect this to the iPad, which is the data collector, you use the GP app. Do not use the PD app or any other app. No OS, no UT, no P none of that. All you're going to use for the GP8000, 8800, and 8100 is going to be the GP app. Okay, you're not going to use the GS. That one's for their subsurface system. So when the app comes up, uh, then you'll have some you know, data probe and service and all that. And so now they're ready to be connected. Once the GP8000 has the little QR code, um, if you have never connected them before, you'll use that QR code. If you have, then you won't have to. Um, but it gives you a wireless module is obviously already working. It has 93% battery. Um, and in here, we'll go into probe in order to connect them. When we have a series of these, we'll have to choose which is the right probe. And in this case, the... Uh, serial number, and you can see we have our sticker on there. Uh, we service our own equipment, but certainly if you have a need for service of your equipment, uh, reach out to us through the website. Uh, but it is 0030024. And so right here, we'll choose the right serial number, 0030024. You'll press that little icon and you'll press join. And now it'll take a second um, to read it. Once it reads it, it'll tell you that it's connected. Uh, on the screen, and then you can get started collecting your data. All right. And usually, again, it might take a minute or so. Um, but this, what's nice about it is it will remember all of your systems that you've used. All right. So over here, you can see it's now connected. And it uh, just tells you connected. It tells you how much battery is on uh, the system. Uh, it tells you the firmware, you know, what your expiration date is for your license, and everything like that. Um, so we'll go ahead and get out. So now to get started collecting, we'll go create new. And once we're in create new, actually first thing you can do is you can see where it says test 004. You can click that. And now you can put in uh, whatever you want. And so you can actually just change the name. I'll tell you what, let's go back for one second. Um, and this is important, especially if we're sending a system out to you. This is our recommendation is to add a new folder. So you can add a new folder and put whatever project it is. We'll say, you know, quick start guide. Okay, and I'll say QS guide. Okay, now I have that folder in here for my project. I'll click that folder. And once it's highlighted, I can go here now and start adding data files. Add, and now we can go ahead here and change the file name if we want. Let's see, there we go. And you know, we can say, um, you know, quick start uh, quick start guide. Okay. And now it'll change that. So it'll just start from zero, zero, one file, zero, zero, one, and it'll increasingly go to two, three, four, as we go. Um, once they're connected now, right, we have the actual instrument connected with the, uh, tablet. We can just get started. But before we do, there's a few options here to, you'll have to deal with. Number one, in measuring presets, you can do a line scan or an area scan. A line scan is you're just going to go 2D, that's usually used if you're just going to mark out in real time. 
Um, area scan is if you're going to do a 3D grid, okay? And this is a two foot by two foot, but you can extend this actually to very large grid sizes if you so choose. Uh, we've done some huge grids uh, with this system, you know, 10 feet by 10. We had a customer recently who rented a system and they did uh, six 10 foot by 10 foot grids. And they said, because they were able to do it right on this tool, it made their life much easier. For this quick start guide, we'll just do a line scan. Okay, next thing down is depth or speed. This is basically just depth. And so if you go max speed, if you select that, that means it's gonna go shallower. If you go max depth, it's gonna go deeper. Uh, but you know, you'll have to move a little slower. We'll go max speed because on this wall we're about to run it on, it's six inches only, and so that will be plenty of space uh, for us. Um, the next thing down is repetition rate. This is also known as scan step. So five you know, scans per inch, that's gonna be the highest resolution, uh, but you have to go the slowest. 1.25 is gonna be the lowest resolution, but you can go faster. I, we never put it on 1.25. We either go on two and a half or five, and honestly, lately I've just been using five and just go a little slower. You'll have, your, your data will be uh, uh, denser. Uh, finally, you can choose imperial or metric units. Uh, we'll go ahead and stick with imperial for now. Uh, and that's it to get started, all right? Once we go and actually push the system, then we can start getting into image processing, um, you know, display and things like that. But to get started, we'll kind of go to the wall over here. You can start the actual line scan one of two ways. You can either press the little circle on uh, uh, here or you can press the little circle on here. It's your, uh, your choice. So go ahead, uh, Paige, and press the circle there. Once you press it, it's ready to start going. And as he pushes the instrument, it's starting to collect data. Now, as he collects it, you can see it looks actually like a heat map, probably not what most people are used to, and that's because this is a migrated view. We're going to adjust the gains, but if you take two fingers, you can swipe up and now get a different view. This is traditional view, right? If I swipe up again, I have migrated view. Two fingers swipe up, right? That's it. Swipe up, swipe up, okay. Second thing is you can bring your your actual uh, A scan or your one dimensional view or your wiggle trace, whatever you call it, right off the side here. The green is the actual pulse and the red is the envelope. Um, also in here, you can you know, make larger, bigger, whatever you wanna do. So here is the back of our slab and then here's three reinforced, go a little bit further up, three reinforcements right there. Well, now four reinforcements, okay. So if we pull it back, right, you can see you get a, tr a marker that starts to come back with you. All right, so stop it right a little bit more. Stop it right there. So now the marker is bisecting this hyperbola. That's an indicator that you're on top of an embedment. And actually, if we look here, you can see the laser guides on the side are literally right across uh, where there is a target that we have marked out um, in the past. So that's the basic functionality to get started with this. Uh, we'll go ahead and show a few of these image processing functions. Right now it's on auto gain but we can go ahead and undo auto gain and adjust it ourselves. So it gives you two options. It gives you linear gain and time gain. Linear gain is basically gonna adjust gains or amplitudes from the top down, and time gain is gonna adjust them from the bottom up. And so really what you wanna do is adjust the two of them to have an appropriate sort of uh, uh, set of amplitudes across the section, all right? Yeah, I can even sort of continue to do this a little bit. So now that's, you know, it's obviously brighter. If I scroll up, that's oversaturated. So we can adjust the gains down on this now, okay? And so now that's a bit more appropriate. Now here's the back of our slab, actually at about six inches. Now we didn't even do your, our hyperbola fit, which we'll do in a second. Um, and then here's you know the uh, migrated and transformed responses from uh, internal reinforcements. Um, again, you can kind of you know move in, out, whatever you wanna do, um, but that's a good, a good looking uh, uh, migrated view now. Next, uh, underneath gain, you have a few other filters. You can do noise cancellation. This is going to sort of, you know, deal with some uh, frequency noise uh, as well. And then you have background. And so background is going to help remove um, horizontal banding. Now, what you saw there was if you're too, right, so now we remove some of this junk from the top. If you're too aggressive, you can remove the back of your slab or the back of your wall, because it is horizontal. So don't be over aggressive because you can move, remove things of interest. So, you know, use this uh, carefully, um, you know, and that sort of looks appropriate. Finally, uh, for dielectric, we'll 
we'll go back to this view. For the dielectric constant, this is going to allow us to do our uh, adjustment here, actually, and I'll ha probably have to stop it. Yeah, we're going to have to stop. So if we stop our line now, stop it, I can come in here and do this dielectric adjustment. All right, and I can go ahead and wrap this around a hyperbola till it fits appropriately. And once it fits, right, and I'm using this slider bar here uh, to adjust it, right? So here we're going to go, we can make it more narrow, wider, whatever it is. We want to put it over our hyperbola. And you can do it over the top the, you know, or the middle or whatever. Whatever f you can find fits well. There we go. And so that's pretty appropriate. If we want to know the depth of something, then we're basically going to come in and identify... All right, you know where these things are. So right now, in the middle of this, it's given us just over six inches. It's a six inch slab. Um, so that's now pretty appropriate, right? And then that's how we would get the depth is we wanna pin it to the center of this red envelope uh, peak. Um, so next, if you wanna change your color, you can. You know, you can use another color if you, if you choose. Uh, it's up to you. We typically use black and white. It's pretty standard. If you want to make interpretations, you can go and just hold your finger down on it, and it'll bring up a set of interpretations. You can move this around until you get it to where you want. I'll press rebar and save, right? Make sure you press the save button here. And then same thing here. I'll hold it down for the back and say back wall. Okay, and now I'll save that in there as well. So now I have my interpretations. Finally, if I want to turn off my interpretations, we go to the center tab, right? So we were in... Um, the, the functions tab, now we'll go to our tag list. We can turn off our interpretations or turn them back on. If we want to document what we did, we can go ahead and pull this off in this third tab over. And you can actually take a picture of your, yep, hit it, tag as a photo. You can take a photo, go ahead. And now you can use the photo and that photo will be tied to your actual data. So that well, you know, it's always, we've always struggled to go ahead and get, it's just a pain in the butt, right? To get a photo you took from your phone and then connect that in an email or a report to the actual data you collected. So having the two of them together in here uh, is a much better sort of workflow. Finally, if you want to yeah, export data, you can go here and either save a snapshot, right? And that'll just be like a screen capture. Uh, which you can actually see down here now. It's it's in here, um, and you can always go and pull those off. You know, alternatively, if you want to email yourself one, you can just say export as snapshot, and then it'll it'll give you the option uh, to select email right here. Um, that's basically the functionality. I mean, one more thing you can do if you want is you can press this little draw button, which was on the bottom here, and you can go ahead and actually just draw. You know, if you want to sort of um, make it really clear to a customer or something like that. Um, you know, whatever you want. And so you can go ahead and, and put that in uh, if, you, if you choose. You can always erase, you know, your, your drawings as well. Uh, it's your choice. And then once you're done, you can just say done, and now it has those, those on there. And you can screenshot with the drawings on there as well. When you're finished, if you wanted to do a second uh, line, we can press, you know, add next. Uh, we'll have to bring it back up. But you could add next. Uh, uh, right now you can see actually up here, Quick Start Guide 002. And so if we click it one more time, right, Paige, go ahead. Why don't you go across this time? You can go across if you want. Um, as he's going across, it's just collecting data for that next line. So that this video was helpful to you. If you use the ProSec systems or if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us. Uh, go to bigmangeo.com. Again, myself as well as the team that we're developing here are here to help you. I mean, that's what our mission is. We just want to create value, provide value to the folks that are out there um, protecting the people in our communities and protecting the people in our workplaces, you know, protecting the assets uh, uh, that we use every day from energy to water to, you know, concrete and buildings and all that. Um, so we're here to help. That's why we do uh, what we do. Leave a comment below, please. We'd love to hear if this was a helpful video for you. Please share this video with somebody else who might benefit from it. Uh, and then make sure you go to our website, bigmangeo.com. Sign up for a tutorial or sign up for some webinars that we have up there. Uh, I promise you, you will get uh, uh, plenty of education, value um, to help you be better at what you do. So thanks so much and good luck out there.